I have the freedom to go direct with consciousness that well, such that what I need that seems to be right there all the time is available to me and I'm not in the way of it. And then I just go and do the thing or experience the thing or, you know, eliminate the thing or whatever it is that is the message my body is giving me and then go forth and multiply. Welcome, you've landed on Zero Limits Living. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. Every week I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. This show has become so popular you can now see it or hear it on 1,000 platforms across the planet. That includes Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, YouTube, and probably anything you can name and probably anything you're listening to or watching right now. I'm putting all of the episodes in one place to make it easy for you. ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. Just go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com and you can binge on all the past episodes. People ask me about coaching. I started my own coaching program almost 20 years ago. It's been trademarked. It's been tested. It's a system that works. If you're curious about how this can impact you, go to MiraclesCoaching.com and you can have a free consultation. No charge, no obligation. MiraclesCoaching.com. Also, my latest program has been my best for a very long time now. It's really doing wonders. Check out MentalTimeTravelSystem.com. MentalTimeTravelSystem.com. And then you probably know I'm an author. I've written a lot of books. Some say I've written 80 or 90 books, which even I find hard to believe. But they're counting them. I'm just writing them. My latest book is Unexpected Kindness, and Unexpected Kindness is at unexpectedkindnessbook.com, or just go to Amazon and look for Unexpected Kindness. And now to the matter at hand, what we want to do this time is get unstuck. We want to raise our vibration. We want to plug into the voltage of the universe itself. And to do that, I have the living expert on this subject. I'm excited as if lightning has already struck me and went down my spine. So let me tell you who I have. Jennifer Huff is the number one international best-selling author of Unstuck, the physics of getting out of your own way. She's the CEO of The Wide Awakening and an expert in scientuality, bridging the gap between science and spirituality, helping visionary leaders find meaning and fulfillment in life. Her gift of holographic vision allows her to see what's in your way so you can fully love your life. Experiential programs, advanced guidance, and global community agents of awakening are designed to fast track your dreams and help you embody the thriving operating system so you can live in flow. She has spoken on stages, radio and television worldwide. Her website is thewideawakening.com, and she's got some freebies there. But better than thewideawakening.com is the person herself. I have Jennifer Huff here. Jennifer, how are you? Hey, so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. What have you been up to today? Uh, what I've been up to today is I've had a couple of clients. We've been uh, doing some Facebook Lives around around an upcoming program that we have. It's uh, And my husband's just been through a uh, pretty big surgery. Oh. So helping him through that using some of the technology that we know. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's been a full and rich day, my friend. <laughs> it sounds like it. Well, thanks for making time for me and for everybody that's watching or listening. Uh, we want to help everybody here, and I know you're the person to do that. Since you brought up your husband, I did not know about a surgery, so I'm sorry to hear that. I'm hoping everything is progressing. Were okay. you able to speed up the healing in some way, way, shape, or form because of what you do? Well, it's interesting. The reason I started doing what I do now is because uh, prior to this, I uh, had just wicked migraines in my late 20s and early 30s. 
And uh, from those crazy migraines, I I suffered from them for about three years until I just went, no, something's got to change. I was lying there in bed one day. Uh, actually, I wasn't even lying. I was on my knees because the only way I could get comfortable was if I could hang my head and put my forehead on my pillow. Mm. And uh, after throwing up for the third time, I realized that uh, something had to change. And all of a sudden, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I was in so much pain that I, my consciousness left my body, like my consciousness was standing next to my body. Yeah. As I was having this experience of being next to my body, I'm like, mm, this is fascinating. <laughs> Never had that. I remember I was an accountant and an economist before this, right? right? So right. a pretty freaky experience. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. And all of a sudden I just got, this is not even mine. This is somebody else's. And in that instant of knowing that it wasn't mine, I saw the lineage of my entire um, father's ancestry flash before my eyes, all putting pressure on themselves to not be abused, basically. Mm. But that wasn't my experience. That was theirs. And I realized the way that I was running my life was an extreme pressure. It's interesting how I have a husband who probably was operating a very similar way. Ah, and uh, uh, and lo and behold, uh, just in the awareness that it wasn't mine for the first time, I was able to eliminate the migraine without medication within about, I would say it was about five minutes and it went away. That's but after, yeah, right. And so Thank after you. that, what I realized was, okay, if I can do that in five minutes, and at the time I was actually running the largest holistic nutrition practice in Canada, just to give it context. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I I'm not going through this anymore. I, I want to know both for myself and for my clients, how it is that that mechanism works, that instead of working for years on belief systems, you know, cleansing myself for the rest of my life, restricting absolutely everything I eat. How can I have the freedom to go direct with consciousness that well, such that what I need that seems to be right there all the time is mm. available to me mm. and I'm not in the way of it. And then I just go and do the thing or experience the thing or you know, eliminate the thing or whatever it is that is the message my body, my body is giving me and then go forth and multiply, you know? So, so I spent the rest of my life literally. So, so that's, that's what we're talking about with Adam. He's um, in fact, he just, he just did one of the processes. And as a result, he went out into our far infrared sauna and instantly started to feel better because Oh. that's what was presenting i love it i love it well we got to unpack this somewhat sure. first of all i do know that you were uh you were an ec a corporate ec economist weren't you that's for right. <laughs> for a long time and i think that's where you started to get your migraines if i read your biography right on your website mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. yeah but did you have a background anywhere along the way before all of this that would lead you in the direction of spirituality or an awakening or the realization that you're not your migraine and it's actually from something else and you're separate from it and everything that unraveled there? Did you have something growing up? Did you have something before the corporate world? Right. Very so <laughs> it's really funny as I grew up in Canada and uh, my... <laughs> I would say that what was really interesting in growing up in Canada that was that I had such a normal sort of like run of the mill life. You know, my mother was a teacher, my dad was a businessman, and I I was just your normal average. The only thing I remember back then is which isn't average, but I was able to talk to my pets, every single one of them, I literally knew what they were thinking. Mm. But once I shared that with a few people, they just looked at me like, okay, that's weird. Don't do that. So I thought, it's weird. I'm not going to do that. So, and how old were you, though, when you were talking to pets? How old were you? I was about five or six years old. Oh, I realized okay. that it got extrapolated out onto trees, too. I was able to talk to trees and bushes and flowers. And, um, and I realized that not very many other people had developed that skill. I truly believe that everyone has the ability to do it. It's just, I seem to have walked in with that ability. And then I just, I just like, nope, not going to do that. I will never fit in. 
And so, did you close it off? Did you stop talking to your pets and the nature and trees I, through most of your I, life? I shut it off until the migraines. The migraines were uh, serious enough uh, that the only way back home to what I call multidimensional genetics. So it's as though, you know, we walk around this earth. I was walking around this earth in survival mode. Just how do I get by? How do I... How do I survive every day? How do I fit in just a little bit? I'm okay with just a little bit, you know? And uh, I started doing personal development courses and working with shaman and some physicists. And then I started working with a whole bunch of biophysicists and doctors. And that those migraines were such a blessing because from, from this place where I just shut off the entirety of any connection to greater consciousness, greater wisdom, you know, understanding the the physics of how it all worked. I shut the whole thing down. It actually took a cosmic two by four like migraines to get me to a place where I would actually start being curious again. My mm -hmm. entire life changed, of course, at that at that moment. But I really, I really wanted such a, and I'm sure you're the same way. I mean, people don't have to suffer the way I did. Right. And uh, if they literally knew how to go direct with consciousness, how to get out of the way of that, which it comprises 99.39% of them, and they were able to do that, which everyone can, there isn't anyone that can't. It's mm -hmm. just most people are running around figuring out how to survive better rather than how to live in overflow. And surviving better is a bunch of steps and a bunch of mental things and a bunch of trusting things. And it's all a bunch of mental exercises. And what I realized as I was going through my own, uh, you know, even saying this own awakening journey, mm -hmm. own awakening, awakening. Aw I mean, consciousness is always shifting. We're always awakening. But as I was going through that initial catalyst, I would say, to realize that there was a whole other world out there, mm -hmm. literally, it it uh, it took me from thinking that I was surviving pretty good as, as best I could, making okay money, you know, had a corporate mm -hmm. job, blah, 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 to actually, and that's when I left the corporate world, to actually seeing that, holy crap. You could actually live in overflow every single day if you understand the operating system. So there was a level of freedom in that, but I've I, got chills. I've got chills. The the whole concept of surviving better versus the option of being in overflow, overflow mm -hmm. of abundance, overflow of joy, whatever the words happen to be. Yeah. That's an insight all by itself. That's a priceless insight that I'm pausing to reflect on and also highlighting for everybody watching or listening. So they can consider, because I would say I and most people are caught up in either direct survival mm -hmm. or in surviving better, which yeah. is a, a nice phrase. But there is an option here, <laughs> and it's the one you're pointing at. What would be a definition of overflow or being in the flow? Or I guess you used the phrase overflow. What would be a definition of that so we can all relate to it? So being an overflow is a is a state of grace whereby you have a cellular knowing rather than a mental knowing. It's mm -hmm. like a cellular knowing. It's a physical experience of knowing that any challenge or issue or problem that can come your way, the solution in physics has already been created, which is just the laws of physics. It's, it's how it works. But when you embody that fact, Instead of freaking out or getting desperate, which I find happens a lot to our clients, is they're in mm -hmm. desperation when they come. It's like, I just want this to happen. I can feel it. I'm on the edge of a cliff. I should. Da, 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 da. But when you actually embody cellularly the idea that uh, that there already are solutions that have been created the instant you have a problem, what happens? is that the overflow comes from that cellular knowing that your job is to align your frequency with the answers rather than to mentally get desperate and try to figure it out with the same brain that got you to the problem. Right. 
right? Oh, this is this is good. This is very good. Help us though. How do we get to that cellular knowing? I'm imagining, you know, my role is to to be the the agent for all the people who are watching or listening. Totally and there are people, there's they're suffering. There are people who are suffering. They're watching Zero Limits Living because they're looking for that hope I promised them. Well, yep. we're giving them hope. How do we get to the cellular knowing? By the way, love the show. <laughs> Everyone should watch all of them. So uh <laughs> wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, great shows. I've watched several. So wow. so with respect to um how you get to that cellular knowing, where the first thing you have to do is well, there are actually five things. And you you mentioned the book Unstuck at the beginning. Yes, your book. It's wonderful. In, in the book, and thank you, because you you literally wrote a beautiful, um, a beautiful several words about the book. So I right. appreciate Right. You're welcome. But there are there are basically some some tenets that one w- one has to shift their paradigm about the way they approach life. Hmm. So these are going to be kind of like a a little tree shaking, Doctor Joe. Oh, I love it. Let's shake the tree. Little, little tree shaking. <laughs> so the first one is, and at first when people hear this, they usually go, "What now? What now?" Stop fixing yourself. Mm. The instant you approach, so let's say people listen to every single last one of your podcasts and all of their answers are in the podcasts. All of the people they need to hear, everyone they need to listen to is there. All of the information Mm. that ever was needed is you have talked to some brilliant people. But how they approach listening is that they're broken and they need fixing. Mm. In the laws of physics, and and so many people, the majority of people who come to programs or listen to podcasts or you know do whatever, they go to a chiropractor or the doctor. They're going there because they perceive that something is terribly wrong with them and they're broken and they need fixing. So their approach and the energy and the framework and the perspective that they're offering to all of consciousness, to the smallest particles of us, physics, the, the metaphysical particles of us, which form 99.39% of us, the way we approach is what we command from those particles. So life is literally responding to that command. And the command is not your intention. The command is the way you're being. Mm. The way you're being will trump intention every time. Oh, that's another powerful insight right there. The way you're being will trump intention every time. Wow. Every time. So if you approach your life from a place of I'm broken and I need fixing for the rest of your life, you will find all the things that are broken that need fixing in order for you to get to the flow one day, because the perception with which you're even approaching your evolution is from, from the idea it's actually very Freudian and Jungian. It's like, let's, it's very mechanistic, you know, let's fix the brokenness and somehow miraculously awesomeness will appear. You'll be in flow. You'll have this overflow life. You'll be thriving, all this stuff. Mm. But the truth is if you approach those courses from the perspective that you're broken in the first place, it doesn't matter how many times you take them or how many courses you take. It will, I mean, that's why every program we start, we do, we start literally with that tenet. You this, cannot this is a, I want to pause yeah, for a go. second on that one, because when you said that the, that underlying feeling is trumping the intention, I yeah. just want to point out that somebody could be listening and stating the intention, I want to be well. And so they have a conscious, noble intention. It's a positive mm-hmm. intention. Yep. But if what they're doing inside is carrying the belief, the deeper yep. intent yep. is that I am broken. Yes. The deeper I am broken is what is being created and reinforced. And they're chasing every shiny new cure or That's remedy it. or crystal to finally try to unravel that I'm broken. So right. that's the uns- it's almost an unspoken intention. I am broken, even though the right. conscious intention is I want to be well. Right. The conscious intention is uh, I want to be well, but the underlying everything yeah. that they do is is from the place Thought that I've broken. And yeah. and the way to shift that. So there's a technology that we use. It's called a brain bridge. What we look at, at is what I've accumulated over time by working with all these physicists and brain doctors and all that kind of stuff is the wisdom that comes from that 
right side of the brain that on some levels is connected to that infinite wisdom that makes up 99.39% of us. And when we can find the language that that almost creates a legal argument to the left brain that it can no longer think the way it thinks, it can no longer have that brokenness idea or that I'm so screwed up because of my family. Can I give you an example? Absolutely. Please. Okay, so here, Please. here's this a brain bridge for everybody. Here's a, a simple, oh, simple good. one. I'm sitting in a course. <laughs> I'm sitting in a course. There's this guy named Ron in front of me. Ron's a Ron has his arms folded and he's rolling his eyes and it's 10 minutes before the chorus. And I'm like, Oh, it's get out of your way. And, and he's like, why you could just tell, you know? And I said, Ron, who got you here? Or how'd you get here? And he goes, my wife sent me. And I'm like, <laughs> so I said, we're going to start the course now. He said, we're 10 minutes early and it's freezing in here. <laughs> and I said, Oh, this is going to go well. I said, Ron, what's going on? Well, let's just say he had one of the worst upbringings I've ever heard, and he got very vulnerable very quickly, and I was so grateful. And um, he felt safe. I cracked a few jokes. You know, we do what we do because we have experience in these realms. And before long, I found out some heinous things that his mother had done, and then mm -hmm. his father had done, and then just it was horrible. And I said to him, Ron, listen, my friend, I just want to check in. Um, about your family. I said, let's put that aside for a second. What's happened since then? What's your life like now? He said, I probably have the best friends anyone can ever have because my stupid family, blah, 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 you know, fill in the blank. And I said, and what about, he said, my wife is like my best friend. My friends, most people are jealous because they don't even have families as good as my friends. And I said, isn't that interesting, Ron? I said, can I tell you a truth? just coming through. I just feel it. He said, what? I said, you know, the universe knows exactly who your family is going to be before you get here. It's just that most of them won't be related to you. And everyone, <laughs> right. Everyone just got quiet right? and everyone just looked around and Ron just started bawling and he got it. He just got it. It's like, it, it didn't take neurolinguistic programming. It didn't take 21 days. Literally, it's how to make a quantum leap, how to transcend even working on a belief system because about, I don't know, 10 or 20 different belief systems went out the window then because right. all right. of a sudden his mother and father were no longer beholden to some vision he had of who they should be or that literally they were the catalyst for probably a better life than most people ever lived. Oh, that is so beautiful. Yeah. I, I, so I, so I, that's a brain bridge. And I love that brain bridge. Can we do that on our own? The reason I ask is obviously you were there. He was in your course. You were right. coaching him. There was the moment and right. he ended up being trusting of you. But what about when we're on our own? Obviously we can get your book unstuck but can I do this on my own? Can the people watching, listening do this on, on their you own? You can build ranges. So, so in the, so on June 1st, 2nd and 3rd, and actually several times a year, we do a program called embodiment mm -hmm. and embodiment actually teaches you how to go through the process of building a brain bridge on your own. And once you experience it a few times with someone who's really adept at it, you kind of start going, yeah. I need to get, I need to be like Olympic athlete good at this oh, wow. <laughs> because it really transcends the need to, um, here's what happened. You know, I was doing all these personal development courses and I was con and, and God bless really. Um, I'm so incredibly grateful for all the belief work that I did. And I, <laughs> I am incredibly impatient. I'm like, I am like the efficiency queen. I love efficiency. So I'm like, okay, there has to be a way. There has to be a way whereby I don't have to excavate one belief at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know how I can stop analyzing the living daylights out of incidents from this life and the past life. I want to be able to change. So 
think of it this way. You'll love this because, you know, knowing what you teach. So if we, it just will make, it'll just drop in. Okay. That there's a level of thoughts, right? So we do affirmations and we change our thoughts and we catch ourselves thinking a thought that's like, oh, cancel, cancel. In, co- in physics, when you say cancel, you just add an energy to the thing you're canceling. So, you know, if we throw out the cancel, cancel thing. So first of all, but mm-hmm. thoughts, we all know, we've heard it from other people that if you have enough thoughts and you collect evidence for those thoughts, it becomes a belief. Mm-hmm. So then we have this belief thing. And in the belief things, we have all this evidence, you know, collected. And if you have enough evidence for those beliefs, you'll actually get to a paradigm. So there's like a paradigm of living in the United States. Yeah. There's a paradigm of being, I don't know, Roman Catholic. There's a, there's a paradigm to being a white man, you know. Those are paradigms. So from that particular perspective, from the perspective of paradigms, I realized that in order to actually free myself of the beliefs that I was onto and all the thoughts that I had worked so hard on in the other programs I had taken, I realized that if I could, if I could understand the paradigm of being human and being alive, that my beliefs would shift, shift and my thoughts would shift automatically. And that's exactly... Um, what got catalyzed by that migraine in the bed where I realized mm. that, oh my God, this isn't even mine. I wanted to understand the physics of it mm-hmm. not being mine. Mm-hmm. So um, so the reason, the very long-winded answer to your question, <laughs> the very long-winded answer to your question is uh, the question, can you do it yourself? You can do it yourself. And not only can you do it yourself, it's you have to have the context first that it has to be at the level of paradigm shift uh-huh, uh-huh. that we're rather than excavating beliefs because that could take forever or certainly not thoughts although that's those are wonderful tools to have in your tool belt uh-huh. but my what i call divine impatience so like impatience is when you're just like stubborn and you stamp your feet and it's like really annoying and frustrating divine impatience is when you understand the laws of physics and you can feel the future possibility of the answer but you're not you're not um you haven't fully brought it to fruition yet but you know it's going to so divine Mm -hmm. impatience has an aspect of understanding physics and knowing that you have the skill to be able to be receptive to the answer so the the frustration you know is like two percent instead of 90 (laughs) percent so this is this is good Uh, so we're shaking the tree here and you were say you said there were five key things that that shake that tree pretty good and you've given one unless i missed something i am reading straight from the book by the way number two (laughs) okay so when you focus on the subject I, i mean again this law of physics most people know when you focus on a subject whether good or bad um you're giving energy to it so the smallest particles of us um, are our consciousness always, always just presumes, <laughs> which is really anthropomorphizing consciousness, but it always pre- presumes, right, that um, that what we put attention on is what we want more of. Uh, so um uh, mm-hmm. the problem is when you say you don't want something you just put attention on you it just so, put attention on you know it, yeah, i so. mean that's that's a that's kind of a no-brainer law of attraction type right um, idea right so um if you think something is important enough to evaluate analyze or think about life does not argue with you it will give you the opportunity to experience simul- similar circumstances so that one's that one's been around for a while mm-hmm. so um But the third law of thriving is that you were born to be your own guru. Hmm. So in other words, I'm not your guru. You're not people's gurus. In fact, the only way we can truly change is by understanding that we are our own guru and we are our own connection to source and nobody else can tell us about that. So understanding our own operating system, and there's a concept called expansive contractive in our work. And when we're feeling expansive, physically, cellularly, we're on the path of, let's say, what's calling us forward. 
And when we're feeling contractive, we're going away from it. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm not in your body. You know, I can't tell you that, but I can certainly teach you how to master that, right? It seems so, like there's a fine line there. Is there a way to clarify it? Because tell me, I think, you know, I also come from the marketing world in the marketing sure. world. I remember one famous marketer, he's actually legendary. And he says, people want to be led. People want to be led. And then yeah. when you look in the spiritual world, you find a whole lot of people that have been following gurus. Some of them yeah. official gurus, like I, I am guru so-and-so. Yeah. And some of them unofficial gurus. It, it, why are we doing that to begin with? And then if we are our own guru, how do we turn within to recognize, okay, they might be advisors or they might be pointers to something, but really the guru is me. How do we make that shift? Because so much, many of people watching or listening are probably looking to you or to me to be the guru for them. I had a client once who lived in England. She was from India. Hmm. And so she was in the land of gurus, right? Right. And I remember her really giving her power away to me. Hmm. And she said, and, and she wanted to become, she did become a really amazing leader, actually. Um you know, through our work and through some other work. And I remember me typing her back one day after her just telling, you know, just how amazing you are and all this kind of thing. And, and like, Jennifer, it would be such an honor and this and that. And I said, I said, her name was Sidra. I said, lovely. I have a lot of expertise because I have a lot of practice and I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. I get it. I am an expert. I accept myself as an expert. I I am. I do. You're an expert, you know. But everyone if you've lived more than 15 years is an expert at something. Right? And so just because I'm an expert at this doesn't my job if you're, you know, I said to her if you're going to work with me further, my job is to get you to at least the level of expertise that I have. Oh. And if you really take it on, I would love for you to surpass me. And um, and she did really well. But it's, I said, my request is that you remain curious on the adventure, not trying to control life, not trying to wrestle it to the ground, but you would just remain curious on the adventure. And whatever your perception is of life and all the experiences you've had, are going to have you take on all of this information through your filters, through your experience. And it may be that you surpass whatever that means. You know, this is not the Enlightenment Olympics, but, you know, it may mean that you surpass. And I know what my job is. I know what I came here for. And this is not a race. There's no comparison. And I don't, I request not to be guru wise because at some point you'll rip me off the pedestal mm. right yes, there's always that right and so right. and so just remembering so when i see my client i see them as someone that has their own guru-ness and expertise at something and that they can learn just like i did they can learn everything that i teach you know, as well, or I'm not sure if they could do it better now with all the people I've worked with from all over the world, but you know, it's like, go for it. You know, I don't care. It's all good. So yes, I lead. There is no question. I'm helping people build bridges back to their own innate operating system. There is no question I'm leading people, but I'm leading people to their own leadership, right? Believing Before Seeing, a new book by Candace Barr. Teaching you how to believe into existence. Available now for pre-order. Just beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Very beautiful. So, and thanks for asking the question. I actually think it's a really important question. I think so, so too. Let me give you one thing I'm just inspired to share here. Yeah. One of the people I interviewed for this show early on was Mandy Evans. And Mandy Evans has been my coach and counselor for mm. 30 years. Nice. And I remember early on... It might even have been before I even met her. And I heard a cassette tape of one of her talks and she was pointing out, how are you going to know who to trust in the world? Mm. When you're listening to different gurus and so forth, how do you end up knowing this is the one or you're going to trust them? 
Nice. And, and the point she was making is that ultimately you're trusting yourself to make that decision. Amen. And when you, because re- I got chills right now, because back then it was a light bulb over the head. It's like, I was looking for, where's the guru? Who's the answer man? Who knows the secret to life? It must be this person or this person or this person. And then it's re- I'm realizing, wait a minute, I'm the one <laughs> deciding that they had the answer. Yeah. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but I was the one. So it came back to revealing to me that I'm the guru for me. And so I'm just giving it as a snippet of an insight that may That's, help somebody. That right is beautiful. That that law of thriving, you just made it beautifully. So Oh, good. So, yeah, that would that's perfect. Um, you know, I had a client, another client who um is pretty well known now and she 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 was a visionary. She she loved building businesses and she wanted to build a business around um around helping women to have businesses that had philanthropy philanthropy built in Mm -hmm. so that was a giving business the Mm -hmm. business thrived but there was overflow going out into the world making it a better place and um before she started that business we were i was guiding her and she said jennifer i've looked everywhere for a mentor like i've looked everywhere for someone to help me with this with this, how do you build, like someone must have done, da, 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 da. and I said, I, I, one of the things that I haven't mentioned yet is that how I see the world um, is holographically. So even our conversation, I'm seeing aspects all the way back into other lifetimes, experiencing wow. them, and all the way forward into future lifetimes of all the future people who might listen to this. So part of who's guiding me is the askings of all those people who have these yearnings for life and desires. And so when I was looking at her, I looked at her and I said, Laura, I, uh, I, uh, may I offer something? And she said, what? I said, the reason you can't find anyone is because you're the one. Yeah. You literally are the one Craig. You are the pioneer of this. And, um, if, you know, if people are listening to this podcast, then, likely they have a little bit of that spirit as well, where there's something they'd love to get to or some vision that they have that they would love to experience. And um, that's why it's important to be your own guru, because when you're pioneering something, you're the one. So So, um, before you go to the next shake the tree principle here, uh, I have to ask, this is an overwhelming statement that you said that mm-hmm. as you're doing this interview in itself and in you're in, you're in this moment with me, yeah. you're also aware of this holographic moment, yeah. this holographic universe, and there's the past and there's the future, and somehow right. you have it condensed in your head. I can't yes. comprehend that. I know it's this weird. This is a little <laughs> bit like, you know, people wonder why we don't remember our past lives. We can't handle this life, you know, let alone it's- start remembering all the generations that we might have lived at other times it would just con- it would confuse me it make it hard for me to drive yeah <laughs> and it disoriented bring, what's really funny is it brings me peace because i literally oh. all the incongruencies in one person person's lifetimes uh, have led to the powerful now and in those incongruencies what's beautiful is that what's been catalyzed is every answer you would ever imagine Mm -hmm. and it because the laws of physics say it's so and i have so much experience of that in my own life i mean literally miracles are normals for me it's it's what other i I would tell people about my life they're like god um but everyone can live that way but that future trajectory that people feel that sense of urgency, like there's something more, Mm -hmm. like they're on the edge of a cliff, that feeling is the future trajectory that they've already launched and that their greater wisdom is calling them to, but not like anyone, you know, it's already done. It's already, if you can feel it in your body that something's calling you, the all of the steps in many different variations, depending on the choices you make, have already been done. So your job is to actually align with the receptivity 
that would have you be at the frequency of that, which is the next step and the next step and the next step. Mm. So um, actually another story I feel really called to share. So I had this sure. client, maybe a couple of get out of your own ways later. Okay. Then Ron <laughs> and this woman sitting around a round table in the middle of a forest is the most amazing event space I've ever been. in. it was so gorgeous. And, um, and so this woman was saying, you know, Jennifer, it's day two. I got to show you something. I can't even believe it. So she breaks open this vision board, right? She breaks out. She goes, my son, my son, five years ago, I did this vision board a la John Asaraf, the house thing where he got the house mm -hmm. on the beach, the whole thing, yes. right? And yes. so, and so, <laughs> and so my fellow Canadian, and so she breaks this open. She goes, my son just found this last night. I had to bring it in because look at this truck. It's a, like a red Ford F-150 all souped up, right? And she goes, look outside. And it was a red Ford <laughs> F-150. And she goes, oh my God, I totally forgot I did this. I said, so this is one of those holographic things. Yeah. Something dropped in that I hadn't been aware of before. This is 18 years ago. And it was such a it was contextualized by the studies of physics that I had made, but it was such a life changer for me, Joe. It's it so, uh, mm. it just caused so much ease. I said, can I show you something? She said, what? I said, I want you to understand that this is so much deeper than you putting a truck on a vision board. I said, life loves you so much. Literally the particles of physics are commanded by you the instant you have a desire. Long before you put the F-150 on the vision board, your higher levels, your greater wisdom, the laws of physics, life itself was working for you. And the very thing that had you choose the truck to put it on the vision board was the fact that it was already going to happen. It was already happening. That was just a step so that you could have this conversation now so that we could talk about the fact that your greater consciousness, life, the laws of physics were already working on the Ford F-150. And that was just, you know, that was just, That's that so was so just good. icing on the cake. That is and so I, good. Right. And so, and so I want you to give up. You literally are the vision. You are a living. It goes back to the way of being will trump your intention every time. Mm -hmm. Your way of being was already headed in the trajectory of a Ford F-150. <laughs> your intention was to get a Ford F-150, but your higher levels have your back so much that the Ford F-150 was inevitable. Where's the desire coming from? Where desire does the desire? Is generally coming from three places. One is contrast and challenge. The second is you get inspired by somebody else, right? You see someone else having something and you're like, oh my God, in this case, a truck, the certain kind of truck. Oh my gosh, I see them like putting hay and do they had a farm, hay and doing like, <laughs> and they had a construction firm and the, everything fits and they have this bell and that whistle and all that kind of stuff. So you get inspired by someone else. So that's one. The mm -hmm. second is about the challenges or you have a problem. Give you an example in my life. You know, so for instance, with my husband, with the surgery, it takes a lot of time. I mean, you got to take him to appointments. I got to mm -hmm. make food. I'm the president of my own company. It's, it's, it's a lot, dude. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm thinking, so the desire comes from the contrast of, I can't keep doing this and using, using, you know, what I cellularly know rather than mentally trust uh -huh. that's the distinction i'm not interested in trusting a concept i cellularly know after my life experience that aligning myself and actually getting out of the way i get what i like to call or better results yeah. so the or better was um my neighbor started bringing me dinners and then uh, what happened was someone started to go fund me and for Adam. And then uh, right now, as we speak, I have people cleaning the house downstairs, the perfect uh, person that right. my husband wrote a book and she's into what he wrote about. And her husband 
I'm as into what I write about. So they're each reading both of our books and they're totally aligned with what we teach. It's like, you know, you can't make this stuff up. Right. right. So, right. so, so that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And where's the third? You said there were three ways. And the third be, one. So it's desire. challenge and contrast. Yeah. The third thing that causes us to have desires is that, okay, so that let's see if we can really. You know, do you ever hike, Joe? I have hiked. Not, not, so not in do, a you while. Ever go, do you ever get to a space where you're at an overlook mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're just in this like place of awe? Yes. Yes. Okay. For me, when I go for a walk in nature, I did it last night. I, you know, I walked up to this swinging chair that hangs from a, hangs from an oak tree. <laughs> Thank God it's worth the walk. It's cheese at the steep hill. But anyway, <laughs> I got up there and, you know, I got, I got given things that probably on some level I was already desiring. Uh -huh. But letting myself catch up to the desires that I already already made from living my life. Uh -huh. And those desires were around everything from really personal stuff to um, just social life to just powerful desires. I'm, I, whatever the hell an I is, you know, I in this now it, you know this physical body is married with a with a um with a soul and mm -hmm. this soul is coming through and the soul has already lived many 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 lifetimes that sent me on a trajectory so if you imagine the soul has a trajectory and the evolution of humanity has a trajectory and uh time space has a trajectory and non-time space has a trajectory and consciousness has a trajectory and the difference between men and women has a trajectory and everything mm -hmm. is constantly evolving. But in the powerful now, of course, if we can get to that place sitting on a swing, um, we can presence ourselves to what's in the highest, what is already being worked on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we can catch up to that desire mm -hmm. and relish it and revel in it to amplify our awareness of the next steps. Let's put it that way. I love it. And thank you for going on the little side path there to answer the question about where the desires come from. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we need to, before we run out of time, I have some key questions and I want to make yeah. sure we, we really shake the tree. I think you had another principle to share there. Two more, very easy, but Good. tree shaking. One yeah. is stop trying to stop the unproductive habits you know the habits mm -hmm. of behavior mm -hmm. or the belief mm -hmm. systems mm -hmm. just make them a lot less interesting if we can make them less interesting by actually activating how the world does work and getting practice and experience and thank you natalie ledwell with your evidence journal you know if we can do all of that what happens is um all of a sudden the who we really are starts to drown out the habits that are ex exemplifying who we're not. Hmm. And when we're at that higher frequency of who we really are in those superpowers, that multidimensional DNA, uh -huh. what happens, we're not spiritually bypassing because what happens is you still work through the things you need to work through. It just becomes way easier because you're doing it from a frequency beyond that. Okay. I got to push a little bit. Somebody's sitting on their sofa and they are eating bonbons yeah. and, and suddenly they realize I do this every day as they drop a bonbon. And then they're going, how do I, how do I make that less interesting when the bowl and the experience and the taste and the chemicals going off in their brain are saying, oh, yeah. this is pretty damn interesting. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, just to take it as a you know frivolous example, not maybe frivolous, but an example. It's not a frivolous think? example. It's like yeah. so. What happens is, and I, I, you know, it doesn't matter how many times I hear this. I love it anyways. As we're focusing on what's in front of us, we're recreating reality. It doesn't mean that you're stuck. It doesn't mean you're sabotaging. It doesn't mean you're sabotaged or you're stuck. It just means that you're recreating the same thing over and over and over again. Oh, I love it. I want to pause there. That's a great statement. As we're focusing on reality, we are recreating reality. 
that 100%. So what it requires at first, I hate to say this because it's, I remember resisting this word so bad. <laughs> and that's the word discipline. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At first, as whatever is my witness, whatever universe, consciousness, physics, God is my witness. It's like, it does. It's not that changing the bonbon thing takes discipline. It's that at first being able to have the evidence so that you can make this cellular shift to embody a thriving operating system takes discipline to consistently spend at least five minutes a day imagining a future that isn't so far out that it blows your circuits or makes you upset or causes resistance or makes you feel more depressed, hmm. but it's just enough ahead that it can get you a little bit inspired. And that would be really nice and all that kind of stuff. And you write the movie in your mind until I call it, um, um, living the future now. And as you live the future now in your body and your biochemistry starts to shift, consciousness starts to realize that you're not interested in reality as much as you used to be. And as you do that, and this is a whole other conversation we didn't even yeah. get into, which yeah. is the photons that come out of your 75 trillion cells literally run around the earth seven times in a second. So 75 trillion times, you know, <laughs> seven times in a second right and you're that's what you're emanating out into consciousness right so mm -hmm. so that's what it's responding to so for those five minutes you're telling consciousness that you're deliberately interested in something different wow okay excellent what was the other tree principle we have here tree the last principle. one is we've talked about it already so it will be very short Okay. You are the living intention, which will always trump the mental intention on a vision board. If you have the truck, the this, the that, da, 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 da. this is how I think about it. If you're going to do a vision board, put all those things at the top. That's fantastic. But in the other 80% of the vision board, write the words or better. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've always written this or something better. Uh, I think I wrote it in the attractor factor. State your intention, but right behind it, this or something better to allow what I'll call the universe to yeah. give you something you can't egoically even imagine at this point. 99.39% of you has access to the resources of all that is. Trust me, the or better. So you know what? I, I love this. It's like, I don't want to know what I want by having an intention. I want to know what I want by what shows up and being surprised by what shows up going, Oh my God, that's the best thing. I didn't even know I wanted that. Right. Yes. And I know that feeling and I agree with you. That is the, the child surprised on Christmas morning kind of feeling with the present. You didn't even ask for and You didn't right, even right. know it existed. And it's like, there it is. That's right. exciting. I, I tell you, you are amazing. There are so many layers that we, I wish we had more time to oh, uncover man. here. I want to ask you a couple of key questions though. Sure. And, and one of them is, you knew I was going to interview you and you thought about this because you watched some of the other shows. What were you hoping I would ask? Were you really rubbing your hands together and Ooh. going, oh, I hope Dr. Joe asked me this question because I can't wait to get into it. Or... <laughs> Or was there a question you were fearing you, I would ask? You actually asked a couple of them. So okay. I, I'm not really surprised. Um, and let me just think, there was, yeah, what is, what literally, like, how can anyone embody, how can anyone make a quantum leap and embody, make embodiment their way of living? as opposed to having to work on their thoughts and their beliefs and yeah, working so hard yeah. and excavating and all this kind of stuff. How do we make that shift? How do we be, embody it now without having to go through the one at a time way of dismantling the software of the brain? And the biggest thing is if I was going to give one step, yeah, there's more steps, mm -hmm. but first you have to know that it's possible. Mm. And to know that it's possible, you have to have the experience of making a quantum leap. And I want to show everybody that you've done it already. If you swim or if you ride a bike, you've already 
may had an embodiment, you've had a physical experience where you didn't have balance on a bike before. And then all of a sudden you had, you embodied a distinction around balance that you never lost. So imagine, so I studied the physics of how to do that. And once, and it's a process, because I wanted to, what is it, deconstruct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the laws of physics that cause us to make these paradigm shifts that have us be working so hard on my migraines. And then all of a sudden, in an instant, you know, yeah. I don't have migraines anymore. Yeah. Not only that, I fell in love with my dad, you know, so a whole bunch of things happen in that instant, right? And so how do we, by the way, Ron walked out of that program just, I mean, even to this day, that guy is so much more relaxed and he just, he's so appreciative of his life instead of having disdain for his past, dominate mm. this blessed life, mm. right? But he continues <laughs> to shift, shift those paradigms. So for me, it's knowing it's possible first that and that anyone can do it mm -hmm. that's a door and then just go and get the tools go and get the like, go and learn what that is so yeah yeah and get your book for example it's on amazon yeah. isn't it uh it's Unstuck. also yeah mm -hmm. it's on audible as well and the audio version is there and your website's the wideawakening.com and you have a free course there the wideawakening.com the yeah. other question I like to ask every single one of my guests, and I want to ask you, mm -hmm. this show is called Zero Limits Living. And so mm -hmm. I consider it an ex exploration of yes. limits. And yes. so the question is, do you feel we have any limits? Of course. I mean, right now, do we have limits? Absolutely. Um. You know, we don't know what we don't know. Right. So if the question is right now, then of course, you know, we don't, but I love discovering them and then just making my glass ceiling, my new floor. Right. I mean, right. that's what embodiment is. Just make the glass ceiling, your new floor, Woohoo! you know? <laughs> so ultimately from the bigger picture, do we have any limits? I, you know, truly not. I mean, I th we're, we're in 3D, but even in 3D, we can access other levels of consciousness when we sleep. So we can have any experience of anything, anytime. And uh, the, curio the curiousness on the adventure of that, man, does that make for great lives. So, <laughs> right? This is, this is remarkable. Jennifer, you are truly amazing. And I know that you have profoundly influenced lots of people. Many of them I know personally. One in particular mm. is my love, Lisa Winston. And I have seen her excited to sit down on a virtual event that mm. took three days. And in I my know. mind, I thought she's going to come out and eat chips or something. She's not going to sit there for three days. She sat there for three days. I know. She absorbed everything and she came out of it actually with breakthroughs, with discoveries, with energy that was awakened in her. Mm -hmm. So you are doing magic that we've only just touched. Oh my gosh, really? In this, in this very quick interview. So I encourage everybody to go get your book, The Unstuck Book, The Physics of Getting Out of Your Own Way. Go to your website, thewideawakening.com. And then Jennifer Huff, what do you want to leave everybody with? Is there, is there a thought? Is there a question? Is there a to-do? Is there a quote? What would you like to leave them with? First of all, I adore your sweetie <laughs> so much. Just <laughs> Me <like>, too. <laughs> oh, God, man. So, um, yeah. How about... The issue really is never the issue. That you make it the issue is actually the issue. Right. And after that, there it's literally limitless. It's just following that expansive, the feeling of like, <gasps> you know, when mm -hmm. someone speaks, Follow that, make decisions based on that. Really let your heart be called and leave those contractions behind. But the issue is never the issue. That you make it the issue is the issue of what's stopping your receptivity to the answers. 
I love it. Well, Jennifer Huff, I can't thank you enough. I love you. I love what you're doing. And I thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all the love you're bringing into the world, my friend. Thank you. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. You've been watching Zero Limits Living. Every week, I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. You can see or hear the show on 1,000 platforms across the planet, or just go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com, ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com, and binge on all the episodes, and sign up to be alerted when new episodes come out every week. Check out Miracles Coaching. Go to MiraclesCoaching.com. Check out MentalTimeTravelSystem.com. New book, Unexpected Kindness. I want to thank Nick in the engineering department, Candice Barr, for giving me the chance to do the show, Lux Media for making all this happen. And I thank all of you for being here, supporting the show and passing the word. You are the light workers. You're the ones making a difference. I love you all. Expect miracles. <laughs>